So I just had to play those clips because they truly show the power of nuclear weapons and as scary as they are, they're just fascinating. Which is one of the reasons why I had a desire to see this movie. Because I love history and Nolan movies usually hit. And this time is no different. Christopher Nolan does hit and he delivers his newest movie, Oppenheimer. And the basic premise is that during World War II, Robert Oppenheimer gets appointed to run the Manhattan Project. And for those of you that don't know, that project is in reference to the creation of the atomic bomb. So I know I've kept y'all waiting. So without further ado, let's get into this explosion of a movie. And yes, we'll be hitting some spoilers. First and foremost, I'd just like to bring up the amazing acting from pretty much everybody in this movie. There wasn't anyone that I thought didn't bring their A-game. And just to point out a couple, number one, we got the great Killian Murphy. He's playing Robert Oppenheimer and is known as the father of the atomic bomb and just brings an incredible performance. I mean seriously, from his dialogue delivery, his facial expressions, just on point. You can literally watch this actor look into the camera lens and know what emotions and thoughts are going through his mind. If you didn't know Killian Murphy before, you do now. And next, let's mention the legendary Robert Downey Jr. playing Louis Strauss. And his acting in this movie is just fire and it kills all doubt of him being able to play only Iron Man. Not that I've ever thought that because I've seen his performance in other movies like Sherlock Holmes, Zodiac, and even The Judge, even though a lot of people don't like that movie, he always kills it. But just like Killian Murphy, from dialogue delivery, demeanor, and I'm sure with RDJ, a lot of it was improv, he brings the top notch performance here. But now, let's actually get into the film. So this movie is an epic and an epic is like a style of filmmaking that's characterized with large scale and enormous scope about a particular setting. The actual definition of an epic is a film that emphasizes human drama on a grand scale and they usually use history as a base. And that's exactly what this movie does. So let's go ahead and let's recap the movie and I'll give my thoughts as we go. I'm not going to recap everything. I'm not going to recap his love interest. Just basically the basic premise and, and my thoughts. So we see the real life of Robert Oppenheimer and his build up to being the man that gave the people of Earth the power to destroy themselves. So his story starts as a young college student in Europe and he has a lot of anxiety but, but he's a very brilliant scientist. So eventually he goes back to the US, starts to do his own research and creates a class at a college. And at some point he's recruited by Matt Damon's character who Matt Damon actually acts pretty well in this movie and I'm usually not a fan of his work. But anyways he recruits Oppenheimer to create the first nuclear bomb. Now there's nothing really complex between these characters but I do love the dynamic between them and I do like the scenes that they are in. Moving on we eventually get to a point where Oppenheimer and a bunch of other brains where after they work together we have the first testing of the bomb. They call this test the Trinity test and it's successful. Now I love this moment. Probably my favorite part of the movie because even though you go into the movie knowing that this will happen, by the time it does, there is so much build up to it, it is very grandiose and scaled. And the visuals look great, so you just feel the gravity of the moment. And I thought they portrayed it very well. Now also mind you, after this, this is where we see the downfall of Oppenheimer. So after the test, the government takes the two nuclear bombs, they cast him off to the side and they attack Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And in the public eye, Oppenheimer is pretty famous. He's the father of the atomic bomb. But what they don't know is that he's haunted in his head by the immense destruction and the suffering that the bombs cause, and this 100% makes sense. I can only imagine the feelings and thoughts that the real Oppenheimer had after the bombs hit. Like I said, the, the bombs themselves are fascinating, but I can only imagine what the creator thought after so many people died from them. And it's because of this that Oppenheimer meets with Truman. And this actually happened in real life, supposedly. But yeah, he meets with Truman to pretty much stop the development of even more weapons. And Truman's pretty disgusted. He actually thinks he's weak and tells Oppenheimer that there is no accountability for you. But me, I take full responsibility. And he goes on to tell his secretary to kick him the hell out. And I don't want to get political in this video, but it just goes to show you like how a lot of people in the government and people that are the powers that be really are. They don't care about anyone. And it's it's like Escape the Matrix, you know, I'm just playing, but for real. But like I said, we're not getting into that. So throughout the movie and at this point, we're getting more and more scenes shown of Louis Strauss, which is RDJ's character, trying to actively get Oppenheimer's security clearance revoked. And this is because like Oppenheimer embarrassed him at a conference and he basically thought that Oppenheimer was talking shit to Einstein about him. Now we don't know this until the end of the movie, but regardless, Oppenheimer does get his clearance revoked and Strauss actually gets kicked out of joining the Senate. Now that part wasn't too interesting to me, 
But the ending is interesting because it ties to what Einstein tells Oppenheimer earlier in the film. So what Einstein said is that the nuclear test, the Trinity test, could be the end of the world if the chain reactions don't stop. So at the end of the film, we get a cut to Oppenheimer's earlier conversation with Einstein, the one where Strauss thought he was talking shit, and it's revealed that it's not about Strauss at all. It's actually about the nuclear weapons and what their implications will be on the future of mankind. We see the camera pan away, and you see it in Oppenheimer's eyes. He's wondering whether the Trinity test set in motion a chain reaction of the events that could lead to a nuclear holocaust. So, so not a chain reaction into where it's instant obliteration of the Earth, but a chain reaction in how eventually, through time, the end of the world will come about from his creation and I thought that was brilliant. It's a play on what Einstein told him but it's also a play on real life. It's imitating real life and our fear of nuclear weapons and World War III. And I thought that Nolan got that message across perfectly. So yeah, you could probably tell that I very much enjoyed the movie. Let me know what you guys think. There's not much to say besides it was a very well acted, well scripted, well put together and well edited movie and it's truly because of the dialogue of this movie that makes this successful. If you're not a person that likes a lot of talking in the movies this might not be for you but for me it was awesome. I love information. I love gathering information and that would be the only downfall is that I probably didn't hear everything that was being talked about in the movie. So I definitely want to see it once more, but it's a pretty long movie, so so maybe I will when I can stream it. We'll see what happens. But anyways, yeah, let me know you guys' thoughts about the movie. Let me know you guys' thoughts about nuclear weapons in general. And until next time, take care of yourselves. And just remember, even if there's a lot of crazy explosions going on in your life, never give up. Peace!